In full war cries, the Tigers absolutely demolished Carlton under lights at the MCG. And leading from the front, Gatty, was their skipper, Matty Knights. Yeah, look, he was sensational on Friday night, Tone. And as you say, another near best on ground performance. Yeah, was there, now, was there a perception, uh, and I'm loath to use this word because it's Kevin Sheedy's favourite word at the moment. <laughs> the marshmallow word? No, the, the, you know, the <laughs> S word, as in soft. Was there a bit of an unfair <coughs> perception there? Oh, look, it would have been unfair, and I certainly wouldn't have subscribed to it. But uh, there were some uh, quarters who were thinking he perhaps wasn't as vigorous as you needed to be to play in the centre in the AFL or VFL footy. But look, he certainly turned it around. The Tigers are a far better side. We're not breaking new ground by saying that with Matthew Knights in the team and I wouldn't be surprised at all come Friday night in the state game if Matthew Knights was named skipper and there's no higher honour in footy. Alright well he's certainly on fire this season and the Tigers are now in third spot on the ladder. Michael Roberts has this story on a born leader. In the fast-spinning world of AFL, some things do remain constant. Matthew Knight's loyalty to Richmond is one. I suppose a tingle runs up my spine week in, week out when I'm going down the race uh, and just about put the boys through the banner. And to look around and see these young blokes running out behind me with their eyes just, just gazing and ready to go, you know, and, and fixed on success. And I really just get a great, a great comfort uh, out of that, knowing that they're ready to go and uh, I'm a little bit responsible in helping him getting ready to go. Nida is a natural leader, an old-fashioned type of footballer, fearless, no frills. His attitude of, give me the ball and I'll win the game, is one reason Richmond is back with a chance to play their first final series for three years. The heart and soul of Tigerland, nobody appreciates the skipper more than coach Jeff Geeshan. He is an extension of me, uh, he's my right-hand man. Uh, he's the one on the field that is a general in terms of doing what uh, we're wanting him to carry out and he just does it brilliantly and he's been terrific support for me. I mean as a rookie coach I suppose with a, with a lowly profile to have the total support of your skipper the way he has done has just been magnificent. Well I was, thought I had a pretty good chance but I didn't think I'd probably win. Even as a scrawny kid playing in the Sunraysia town of Merbeen near Mildura, Knights always had star quality. If he ever wins the Brownlow medal, Knights is well rehearsed at receiving honours. Here, a typically serious young Matty is named the best 14-year-old in the district. It was 10 years ago that the neat kid with the short back and sides walked into Punt Road and took possession of a locker. He was just 17, but within weeks, the schoolboy was called up to senior ranks. The hero of Merbeen had made the big time, and his parents were there, bursting with pride, following and taping every move. Weighed down by a muddy MCG and dwarfed by teammates, victory in his first game against North Melbourne was the stuff of dreams. A powerful love affair had started. But the rites of passage were not always easy for the straight-laced knights. The country boy was no party animal, but both on and off the field, he was learning fast. I thought they were taking care of me, but uh, they were actually spiking my drinks with tequila and uh, I ended up a, a fair bit worse for, worse for wear as an 18-year-old. But I thought I could take on the world, but after that night I learned I couldn't. Within three years, the kid most likely to succeed had fulfilled his destiny, the youngest ever Tiger club champion. By 95, Matthew Knights was at his peak. Can he kick a goal? Matthew Knights! It's there! The Tigers have got their first! This was the second semi-final, and Richmond was being belted by Essendon. Seemingly, no way back. But the man in the middle with the smooth running gate changed that. Now Matthew Knights. Every time Richmond look as though they need something as a lifter, it's Knights. Can he kick his fourth, third goal? He gets inside, well inside 50. This will bring the house down if you don't find umpire. It's a goal to Matthew Knights. Two years on, and Nida was ready to leave. The club has put great responsibility on my shoulders and given me the captaincy. I suppose, in a sense, I feel and giving something back to, the, back to them, I've really got a 
played to my maximum week in, week out. And I think when you first start playing football, you tend to worry about how you're going. If you have a bad game, you think, well, geez, things aren't going that well. But at the moment, I look sort of look through that. Uh, I think the leadership role has taken a lot of pressure off my own game. But the good times turned to bad. The captain's curse at Hunt Road was to strike again. Tony Free's career had already collapsed along with his right knee. During 96 and 97, a series of traumatic injuries painfully interrupted Matthew's role. There's a bit of a curse happening there, but I, I hope the boys aren't thinking too much about it because um, um, it's the last thing you want to think about, isn't it, when you're running out to play footy, especially when you're leading your club. I think that when you lose a star player like that, uh, there is a real, what, a fog or something over the club and you wait for him to come back. Uh, I know it shouldn't be that way, but it is with every club. Like you look at Wayne Carey last year missing, you look at James Hurd missing, and when they do come back, they are the match winners and some players are irreplaceable. And I suppose uh, you put him in that type of category. He is one of the elite, and when Knights is at the helm, the Tigers are a potent force. Even though Knight's teammates love to have a dig at their captain about his voracious appetite for the ball. Never handballs to me. Doesn't handball? No. Doesn't handball to me. It's it's recorded Knights. No wonder the fans and coaching staff collectively held their breath when Knights was reported in round two this year. Suspended for the first time in his career, it was devastating for Matthew and Richmond as the Tigers momentarily lost their way. This year we missed him for two weeks with suspension and I think uh, you know, the result was fairly obvious. We, we had one good win against Hawthorne but the next game against Collingwood we really you know, felt uh, the loss of him. So, oh look, you know, we just function so much better with him in the side. Well done boys, well done Richie. Both Knights and the tenacious Tigers have rebounded. Several best on grounds this season has the captain dining with the best in the business, part of the Victorian squad. There almost has to be a footy angle for Knights to be out socialising midweek. Bordering on puritanical in his attitudes, Matthew's life is consumed by what's best for Richmond and his career. I don't think you realise the significance till you really think about the members that are out there. We've got 27,000 members, I think, at the moment. Uh, and the tradition, I suppose, when you sit in a room like this that's full of tradition, it really hits home how important and how, how so many people are just waiting on your performance every weekend. Even on a leisurely walk with his golden retriever, Niter is likely to be thinking about tactics and set plays for the coming contest. But though he may be a bit of a square, he's universally liked and respected, and he can laugh at himself and some of his more flamboyant teammates. Benny Garland, Wayne Campbell and Richo and Daff, I mean they worked on the Samson theory that the more hair you had, the stronger you were once you went out there, but uh, I certainly uh, would find it hard but I think all the boys have had haircuts since and they're at least not brushing the hair out of their eyes when they're kicking. But uh, Jeff Geeshan doesn't mind the boys how they wear their hair as long as they can see the footy when it's coming. And for the past two weeks, the Tigers have been seeing the ball perfectly. Nine victories from 15 outings. A thumping display against Fremantle, Knights playing another vote catcher. And on Friday night, when Carlton jumped Richmond, it was once again the skipper who emphatically proved his worth. I think probably most coaches would go straight to their captain for the inspiration you're looking for and certainly in our case who else would we go to but Matthew Knights for sure. Yeah Michael Roberts reporting there now uh, I know footballers talk amongst each other and uh, there's the bad guys and there's the good guys where does Matthew Knights fit into the overall scheme of things there? Well he sits at the top of the good guys list both on and off the field Tony he's, uh, he's just a, such a purist as far as a, as a footballer goes and the way he plays is it's been likened to a quarterback. I mean, he's deceptively, he moves deceptively. It looks like he's slow, but he covers the ground very well. And I, I think he, he sums up the game as well as anyone playing at the moment. All right, then. Now, we're